a lot is really going on in the political zone. <laughs> a lot is going on in the political zone. Bola Ahmed Tinobu is in serious trouble. Now a new video has finally come out. <laughs> you know, since when they conducted the election, a lot of us think that Tinobu will never leave office. But Tinobu is finally running out of office without even receiving a sack. Everyone thinks that it is the politicians and the tribunal that is the power of Nigeria. But it is a big lie. The people that are controlling Nigeria, the power of Nigeria have finally come out. You know, they be looking at Tinubu since when they conduct the election. What Tinubu did in the course of the election, they were looking at him. They didn't see anything. Even when the European Union you know, make the observation about Nigeria election, they saw everything that I think this Nigerian Union you know, power, they didn't see anything. But they have finally come out. And the moment they take this step, Tinubu ran out of office. I would like guys to stay connected to the end of this video. Come and see what is going on in the political zone. Tinubu is panicking at the moment because he knows that when these people interfere into Nigeria politics, he knows that he himself is in serious trouble and these people have finally interfered. So, Obedian, I would like guys to stay connected to the end of this video. They are throwing Tinubu out of office without a sack. Stay connected. If you can share this video, ensure you share it. Let it go viral. And if you can share it, just like it. Give it a thumb up so that YouTube can recommend it for us. Obedian, stay connected. Coming back again. Welcome you back to Lajibom Wash TV. I don't have violence for you today. The of religious gossip. And you should leave the man from Mohammed. What is happening in the Christian world? Turn down the next sense with Lajibom. Hello my great and wonderful viewers, welcome back to Logic of Watch TV. For those of you coming across this channel for the very first time, make sure you click the red subscription button appearing under your video screen. And don't forget to click the notification bell icon so that whenever we drop a new video in few hours time, YouTube will easily let you know. See on what is happening in the political zone. Bola Ahmed Tinubu is in serious trouble at the moment because the people that finally interfere to Nigeria matter now, they are not people that Tinubu can bribe. They are not less powerless people that Nigerian politicians can just look at anyhow. These people are called Nigerian powers. They have finally interfered to Nigeria election and they have finally interfered to what is happening in the Tinubu government. So we didn't have a like guys to stay connected to the end of this video. They are finally throwing Tinubu out of office because they have finally begin this step. Tinubu is in serious panic now. If you can share this video, ensure you share it. Let it go viral. Share to different platform and if you can share it, just like it, give it a thumb up so that YouTube can recommend it for us so that this video can go far. You know, when they conducted the election on the 25th of February, these people did not come out. They were observing Nigeria election. They were looking at everything that happened in the course of the election. How I performed their magic and everything. How different politicians performed their different things, different shenanigans in the course of the election. These people kept moot. They didn't say anything. Even when Tinubu began as the president of Nigeria after his inauguration, when Tinubu began to do all sort of things. These people were observing, but they have finally come and they said no to Bola Ahmed Tinubu that Tinubu must leave office because they have finally begun the steps. And these people are more powerful than Tinubu. So a lot of people think Obi is hopeless, but a hope have finally come for Peter Obi because Tinubu is finally leaving office because they are throwing him out of their office. These people are more powerful than the European Union observers, and they are more powerful than the Nigeria judiciary. So they saw everything that happened. They saw how Tinubu disregard the observation of the European Union. And they saw how Tinubu have been bullying the judiciary for the past few days because of the petition that Obi and Atiku and others filed against him. Tinubu was bullying the judiciary. So these people saw everything. That is why they are interfering now. These people made their statement today. They unveil how Bola met Tinubu and some other 1999 governor. How they spoiled Nigeria till today. How they did their shenanigans everything that they did in course of the Ateno. They listed everything out. They know everything about Nigeria. And these people are bigger than the tribunal. A lot of people think that Tinubu can buy anybody. A lot of people think that Tinubu can buy the tribunal. A lot of people think that Tinubu can do anything because Tinubu has all the power. But the people that have power more than Bola have meant Tinubu have finally showcased themselves. They said no to Tinubu, no to Tinubu government. Though many of the civil rights, you know, many of them have died. We don't really know what killed them. Maybe they're going for them. I don't know. But many of them have died recently. But that doesn't stop them. They said no, they need to take down Tinubu from the government. These people are not obedient and they are not articulate. They have no party. They are the only one that can remove Tinubu from office. So when Tinubu heard the statement these people released in the early hour of today, 
Tinubu was in serious panic because he knows that Anet had finally come to whatever that he was doing in the Asso Rock. These people trailed Tinubu to the extent that they know the people that visited Tinubu in the Asso Rock. They know the agenda of everyone that Tinubu had been inviting to the Asso Rock. And they said they need to reclaim this government. They need to reclaim this country back to the Nigerians. Let the will of the Nigerians stand. That was what these people said today. So, I would like guys to stay connected to the end of this video just for you to hear where they are making their brief meeting regarding how they are going to throw out Bola Ametinubu from that office. How they are going to remove Bola Ametinubu. So, I would like guys to stay connected just for you to hear from them yourself. The powers of Nigeria. Stay connected. Coming back again. <laughs> Commissioner Bani, Comrade uh, uh, Anselm, Ansel, Dure K, there are very many, a long list of our comrades that have fallen, and uh, we want to ob observe a minute silence to respect them. And as convicts parading at the presidential villa with a sinister agenda to determine the fate of Nigerians with the purpose of derailing democracy. We titled this statement, Beware of Regrouping of Corrupt Politicians in Nassau Rock, CLO 1 Stinubu. Gentlemen of the press, on behalf of the board and members of the Civil Liberties Organization, CLO, welcome you to this press conference. We are all witnesses to how Nigeria, our very dear country, which holds so much promises, as a global leader at independence on October 1, 1960, has been destroyed by successive leaders. The founding fathers of Nigeria from the north and south had great dreams and they patriotically laid good foundation for a great country. The military forcefully took over power through a number of coup d'etats and began the process of the neutralization of Nigeria. Through determination and spilling of the blood of innocent citizens, the civil societies, the media, and other patriotic Nigerians were able to chase the military out of power, culminating in the historic return to civilian rule in 1999. However, within 24 years between then and now, the political class paraded themselves as civilian leaders have brought the country to her knees through massive corruption and stealing of our common patrimony. Nigeria is now officially rated as the poverty capital of the world, one of the most corrupt countries, a safe haven for bandits and terrorists, a country with so much oil and gas resources but imports few, four moribund and dead refineries that got billions of dollars in turnaround maintenance, which is a conduit pipe for stealing public funds by every new government. Nigeria is now a comfortable environment and destination for all manners of criminal enterprise to thrive. The implication of poor and inept management of the country is supported by the recent report by the Debt Management Office, which is closed that, Nigeria is, that Nigeria's total foreign debt for the period ending March 31st, 2023, just recently, has risen to 49.85 trillion naira. That's approximately 108.30 billion dollars from 46.26 trillion naira as of December 21st, 2022. Amidst these humiliating setbacks, the civilian rulers of Nigeria have perfected the act of impunity where they regard the military-imposed constitution as a mere document that can only be obeyed by the poor. The CLO is appalled by the recent development in the country where in June, a former governor of Delta State, indicted for corruption, led Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State and former Governor Yeson Week of River State to visit President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Asorok, presidential villa. Ibori, a member of the People's Democratic Party, was in office when Tinubu was governor of Lagos State between 1999 and 2007. 
And on July 12, former Governor Lucky Binedi of those states, who was also indicted for corruption, but took advantage of a plea bargain to escape jail, was among more than 20 former governors, including Bore, who visited Tinubu at the presidential villa. Apart from the few good ones among them, many of these governors who hid under an amorphous nom de guerre, class of 99, were notorious for setting the template for the massive corruption in the country by fleecing their states and stashing the looted funds in foreign bank accounts. While briefing journalists on behalf of the class of 99, Igbinedio has said the visit was to assure Mr. Tinubu of their support and cooperation. We met, according to him, we met the president as a colleague governor that laid the foundation of the current democracy in Nigeria in 1999, which has continued to be strengthened up to today. Ibenedio claimed that they went to congratulate Tinubu on his election and to thank him for appointing one of them, George Akume, as the secretary to the government of the federation. He further claimed that they spoke about security, electricity supply to Nigerians, which they said were key factors in the development of any economy, with Mr. Tinubu assuring them of the administration's preparedness to tackle the issues headlong. But like many Nigerians, we in the CLO are not deceived by the, group, by the regrouping of these former governors who are now shedding crocodile tears over the state of anomie in the country. They had eight years in office and some of them went to the Senate. What did they do? They continued in their old ways. And what manner of support would they be giving to Tinubu beyond an arrangement to accommodate them in the underdeveloped in the underdevelopment of the country? The case of James Onanife Ibori, a former governor of Delta State from 1999 to 2007, is more rankling. He is officially the only former governor who was jailed in a foreign country. He was in 2012 sentenced to 13 years in prison for money laundering by a court in the United Kingdom. Ibori fled Nigeria in April 2010 while answering to corruption charges, forcing the Economic and, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to enlist the help of the Interpol to apprehend him in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and extradited him to the UK where a case of massive corruption and money laundering had built up against him. He served only four years out of the 13 years sentence handed by the UK court and was released from jail in 2016. A very powerful politician, Ibori is said to have stolen more than $78.5 million of Delta State public funds and partly funded the election of uh, the late Umar Yaradua as president of Nigeria in 2007. Ibori's influence in the Niger Delta and indeed Nigeria in general is said to still be strong as persons seeking elective offices consulting for support as a result of his political networks and the depth of his pocket, courtesy of ill-gotten what. He was recently appointed as a patron of former Governors Forum in Nigeria, a position he now leverages to curry personal favors and manipulate political power in Nigeria. The CLO is urging Nigerians to keep vigil over our hard-won democracy as irregular visits and hobnobbing of the former governors and corrupt politicians with Tinubu at the seat of power is a clear and present danger to efforts to rebuild our battered country. We appeal to President Tinubu, whose election is being seriously challenged at the election petitions court, to not convert the highest office of President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria into a rehabilitation center for politicians who put the country in this sorry state. 
Indeed, most Nigerians would question the propriety of President Tinubu parading Bori and other criminal politicians as good men at the highest seat of power in the country. The CLO, which led from the front in our collective quest and struggle for a just society where citizens should be proud to call themselves Nigerians, is now drawing local and international attention to the regrouping of these questionable individuals who are mobilizing and are poised to determine the future of the country in accordance with their solid standard and definition. Impoverished Nigerians who are currently reeling in pains and anguish from the so-called subsidy remover, multiple taxation, high electricity tariff, and other forms of neo-colonial slavery as a direct consequence of corruption must now quickly wake up from their slumber to find their lost voices. Collectively, Nigerians say no to blood-sucking groups of vampires who have left our, our wealthy country in ruins and transformed it into a vast killing field of innocent citizens. We call on all Nigerians to organize and mobilize to take back their country for eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. As we were coming here this morning to address this press conference, that is why you don't find it as part of this statement. This inept, corruption-infested government of Paul Ahmed Tinubu has again increased fuel prices to 700 naira. Officially, at the NMPC pump price, it is 670 naira we land. But of course, you know the ripple effect, what that will mean, it is now 700 naira. Where does that leave Nigerians? 700 naira a liter of fuel, and I can tell you this morning that the prices are marching upwards. This is a man who promised, who, who promised palliatives. They got $800 million in further loans from the Bretton Wood and the World Bank, which they are now sharing among themselves. We all know that the, the, the National Assembly is cornering 70 billion of that amount for itself. 35 billion naira is going to the National Judicial Council. We in the CLO know that all of this is, is a well-designed conspiracy to compromise the, the, the judiciary. But Nigerians are no longer fools. We must now all get our loans to prepare to engage these politicians. They are not politicians because I also know that politicians are people who are uh, a group of leaders who have the interests of their people at heart. But what we have, by even the regrouping of the so-called class of 99 people, governors, when we have succeeded in chasing away the military, they regrouped and managed to seize the different political offices and governors of the 36 states of the federation. What did we get in return? They stole all the resources across the states, apart from a few governors like Donald Duke. Just some of them, you can mention them with, a, with our fingertips. It does not matter whether a politician today is your father, your brother, or your uncle. If he's it, if it, if not patriotic, if he does not have the interests of Nigerians at heart, we must organize and mobilize against these people now before it is too late for all of us. Nigeria cannot go the path of Sudan. We cannot go the path of Ukraine and Russia. We have a country that we call our own today. A small country like Seychelles is rejecting Niger Nigerian passport holders. Why? Because we have lost it. We can no longer close our mouth and allow this band of few individuals to hold our country hostage. The time to rescue our country is now. If you have questions, we'll take it. Executive Director of the CLO is here. We have uh, other senior members of the CLO sitting here. Are your media My name is When you take back, how will Nigerians take back their country? Basically, that is the summary of um, your question. Well, it's, it's uh, a question for all of us. How are we going to take back our country? Are we going to sit back, um, just throw our hands in the air, and um, say, oh, these people are bigger than us, they are, they are more powerful. We can take back our country by individually raising our voices and collectively raising our voices. 
because a country of 200 million people, if you have 50 million people talking, saying, telling the government that enough is enough, I'm sure they will be, they will be very uncomfortable. So they are doing what they are doing because the rest of us are just quiet. Each time they push the bar, we are just. They push the bar, we are just. But if they push the bar, even in countries in Tunisia, you know how the, the Arab, uh, Arab string started? It is just a car pusher. Somebody, just a local government, they, they, they increased the tax and asked him to pay uh, some few pennies more. And he said no, that he cannot even make profit from what he's doing. And then they seized this, uh, what, whatever he was pushing to sell and took it to the office. The man just simply went to his house, told his people that he's going to kill himself, that his only means of livelihood has been taken from him. He took well, went there, set himself ablaze. And the people he told, told others that this is the reason why this man set himself ablaze. And he just caught on. Before you knew it, everywhere was, uh, was ablaze. But Nigerians are used to tolerating suffering. How you guys got here this morning, I'm sure you went through harrowing experiences. You are going to return from maybe the money you won't pay getting here. By the time you are leaving here now, it's double, it's, it's, it's tripled. And then you just go to the offices again, you adjust. Maybe the quality of food you are eating will have to drop to give way for further expenditures. Now, the question is how long are we going to tolerate this direct assault on our livelihood? This is an existential issue. It's about life and death, it's an existential issue. So if you do not rise up, whether you are a lawyer, a medical doctor, a journalist, whatever profession that you find yourself, if you do not say that enough is enough, I can tell you, oppressors do not give up. The only language oppressors understand is, is, is a stronger force of resistance. When that comes, we, the CLO is not going to negotiate with them. We're not going to hold any meeting with anybody. We are going to continue what we are doing. We have a tradition. The CLO have a tradition of resisting obnoxious and oppressive policies. And we are not going to hold meetings. CLO has never held meetings with any government. Whether you are a governor or you are president, we have never had that tradition of we monitor the process of governance under our governance and democracy program. Once we see that the policies that is being pushed out by any government, whether at the national or subnational level, is anti people, we confront it. That's our strategy. And so, for us to confront it, we need to also um, educate Nigerians, inform Nigerians that this is now the path to follow. When Tinubu came on May 29, he, he, he gave an address where on that day he said he was taking up for a subsidy. And it didn't open debates. You know? We were watching as an organization how and what strategies Nigerians were adopt in dealing with that. Nigerians simply adjusted. We have a duty as a human rights organization. We don't just say we are a civil society organization. We are a human rights organization. And the right to life is inherent, it's inalienable, it's given by God. So when government push policies that seems to push you into extinction, you have a right to resist. It is within the ambits of the law for you to exist, uh, sorry, to resist using every legal means at your disposal. The truth is, if this morning we, we have, um, we can find 500 Nigerians who will go to the gate of the National Assembly and sit down on the floor, that nobody's going to come out and go out. Even if you shoot and kill, they will be tired of killing. We all know what happened at the Tiananmen Square in China in 1989 or so, where the Chinese army, the, the, the People's Army of China, were using armored car to crush the Chinese who were who embarked on peaceful protests. It is on record that they crushed 50,000 Chinese, and that was what brought about the Chinese, the the quote unquote the My Chinese Revolution that have brought China today as a world power. So if people think you can sit back, you can relax, and use a small salary to be adjusting the scale you are just such that the scale itself we, we, we overshoot so you know where to i think we are now at that point <laughs> Thank you for staying connected, my great and wonderful viewers. You can hear what all those people said in course of this video. They are ready to symbol Amen Tinubu due to everything that has been happening in Nigeria. You know, it's no more the news that there were voter intimidation in course of the election, there were voter suppression, there are a lot of shenanigans, there are a lot of electoral malpractice that has been performed by a lot of governors all across Nigeria and a lot of politicians just to ensure that Bola Amen Tinubu get into power. So it is not a little drama that have been happening in the tribunal since when Obi-Fi petitioned against Tinubu, against Shetima, 
and against APC and INEC as a whole. You know, it is not a simple drama that will be happening. So Obi was in court tried to reclaim his mandate and the court demanded for 50 evidences which Obi provided but was able to tender 13 of the evidences due to the time that the tribunal gave to him it was a very short time. So even INEC and Tinobu Leia slowed down the occasion for him. So since when they conducted the election, INEC chairman never come out to address Nigeria until European Union observer make their observation regarding Nigeria election. So INEC came out to talk about it immediately after Bola met Tinobu disregard the observation of the European Union. You know, Tinobu was laying on head that he cannot dismiss the European Union observer mission observation regarding Nigeria election because these people give out money to Nigeria to conduct their election. So they have the right to make observation based on what they give Nigeria money for. So because of the fact that they didn't credit Tinobu and they discredit INEC because of their observation report, Tinobu disregarded it because anything that affects INEC affects Bola and meant Tinobu. So all these things happened. The court issuing Soponian to make INEC chairman Mamo Yakubu to appear in court. But INEC chairman failed to appear in court. He failed to honor the invitation of the tribunal. He failed to honor the Nigerian judiciary. So INEC chairman did this. So these people observed everything. They saw everything that happened. How Bola and meant Tinobu cancelled for a subsidy and at the end of the day promise a pilot a subsidy pilot which we are not seeing till today so we never see any of these things till today so fuel price have hiked up now so fuel price have hiked up now to around 700 naira precisely today and nothing is being done the economy of this country is going down is sinking and a lot of people are suffering the poorer are becoming more poorer and the rich are becoming more richer in the country that we all have the same right. A lot of things are going on in this country. It was the same Bola I met in Obu that came out to say that let the poor breathe. You don't suffocate them. That was a statement that he made when he was newly elected as the president of Nigeria. Are the poor really breathing in Nigeria? Can the poor really breathe? Is there really oxygen for the poor to breathe in Nigeria today? Are these politicians and their political system not suffocating the poor? Because people can no longer eat three square meal as far as this country is concerned. Earning 30,000 naira as a single person in this country is just like you are earning the money that can only sustain you for a week and mind you that 30,000 naira is your monthly salary so things are high up in this country because of everything that nigerian politicians turn this country into the economy now grown worse and there are inflation in price of goods and commodity so nothing is favoring the poor again the money we are holding is valueless dollar and four are competing on who to reach 1000 naira first dollar is getting closer to 1000 naira and even four price is getting closer to 1000 naira the poor are not breathing in this country but yet these politicians are pretending as if all is well with nigerians because nigerians whenever you push them into the suffering bar they will adjust for people to survive in nigeria is very very hard now the survival rate is 70 30 for people to make a living in this country called nigeria now is very hard so that is what these people were saying in course of all these things that was said in this video they said they cannot open their eyes on ground for things to be going worse in this country they said nigeria is fond of adjusting whenever they push the bar whenever they shift the bar nigerians will adjust nigeria know how to adjust to suffering so much nigeria know how to adapt to all this rubbish that all these politicians are doing in this country the poor are not seeing any benefit from the country the poor are not seeing any means of survival in the country there's no work for people that even move out of school there's no work for anybody outside so the poor masses are becoming more poorer some people are dying of hunger they are starving to death in the country where some people are up there impersonating the money and sending their children with the public fund to america and at the end of the day when they leave office they will never give account of how they spend the public fund accountability is not part of their service that is what nigerian politicians have been making nigerians to believe and once they just bring up a phrase regarding how they spend nigerian money everything will die down because there's no law in the country that has been enforced against them just to ensure that they do the right thing as far as this country is concerned what do you guys think do you really think these people can take ball and 
renewable out of power so popping on the comment section of this video as i'm going to get another thing on there for you make sure you follow me on my social media handles on facebook at like for watch tv and i like for entertainment and on instagram at like for guess what guys see you in my next video bye <laughs>